or what's good. Here we are again, and I mean, evidently, I'm just, I, I, I'm absolutely addicted, and I can't get enough of Xanat, man. Oh my god, give me more. No, no but really, uh, I just go with whatever uh, brings me amusement. <laughs> A muse mentality. The mentality of the muse. Amusement. And this is exactly why. I was going through different videos and uh, I went through several and I'm like, you know, yeah, I would be interested in this in a certain modality, in a certain mode, in a certain, uh, in a certain way. But I was not in that way. I was in the way of Zentertainment of, and it, you know, it wasn't even Zen, it just happened to be uh, Zen uh, with, with my selection. Where I just, I just wanted some amusement, uh, some levity, and uh, Zen usually delivers on the levity and the amusement which isn't to say that he doesn't dive down in to the depths because that's that's what he does that's what zen is it's all aspects so uh the true <laughs> we're moving past the light workers here people we're we're going into the light into the depth bringing it back to you in a form where you can engage, have fun with it, be light with it, but also recognize and feel the heaviness of the beingness that we are. So yeah, and and this is just all very uh, synchronistic and, and humorous to me because I just I just made a video uh, the other night about uh, <laughs> it was it was about Joe Rogan uh, mainly. Uh, I touched upon some other things, and there are some there are some uh, you know. Pretty good points in invalid <laughs> and valid, not invalid things touched upon. But the energy after I rewatched it a couple times, I rewatched it while I still had the spirits in me, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" I know some people that appreciate this, like the genie, <laughs> but then I rewatched it. A couple more times, and I'm like, I, I don't want to send that energy out. I mean, yeah, I do feel those things, but to express them in the way that I did, that, that was a little much. But but essentially, that video was about, uh, it was about fuck Joe Rogan. <laughs> And, uh, hmm, I don't want to go too deep in that, because it, it, it might get me worked up again, because I have a, uh, a healthy disdain for bullshit, and for people who play the game, uh, in a manner that benefits themselves only. Or... In Joe Rogan's case, it benefits the propaganda and agenda of ignorance and not thinking for yourself, of being amused by the ignorance. Which I mean, once you get to a place like yes, uh, allow allow the bullshit to. 
just kind of bounce off of you. And if that's uh, how you do it and, and you want to be amused by it and just, you know, it's not going to get under my skin. So ha 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 bounces off of you. Yeah, for sure. But if you're amused by, if you're amused to the point where you're sucked in and you start to believe in the lie and the bullshit scripts, which is what Joe Rogan propagates, the bullshit scripts. And if you think that he's playing a game or, or uh, playing a certain side, I would say that you haven't absorbed enough of Joe Rogan on different pla different platforms to where you're able to kind of gain uh, a, a 360 perspective of this motherfucker. So yeah, enough about that. Fuck Joe Rogan. I appreciate all comedy and all comedians and I appreciate a lot of the stuff that Joe Rogan does. I appreciate uh, the humor and the humors. But Uh, it, it, sh it should be pretty clear uh, for people, for people that can discern reality for themselves, when someone is playing a part. And if they're really good at it, it's, it's not that easy to tell at first. But then with the repeated, the repetition of the ignorance... It should be pretty fucking clear of what their agenda is. <clears throat> Which is the uh, the negative side. Uh, the, the bullshit side of egotism. Okay, so let's see if I can do this here. Oh, and I also... Like this this is this video I think is kind of a shout out to uh, Zigzag, which uh definitely check out Zigzag if we haven't yet. He's he's an awesome motherfucker. Uh he is intense, yes, at times, but he is on it. Not to be associated with Joe Rogan and the On It brand. <laughs> but but Zigzag is on it as in in it. As in, in tune with it. So also, I wanted to say a uh, shout out to the Mayan Jin and Zigzag and their last little get together. Uh, that was very humorous. Which reminds me of June Paris and uh, the, the hoo hoo hoos. Which, uh, the beverage I just finished. Let's, let's see if I can do this here. <laughs> I'm going to try to, try to shed some light on this while holding <laughs> this. So I'm going to have to put this light in my mouth. No, no, I do not put things in my mouth regularly. They're shaped like this. So don't get the wrong idea. So yeah. Uh, if you couldn't tell, that was a uh, that was an owl. And it's called Lookout, APA, and that is a fantastic beer. It is it it is in a can, and I am getting to the point where I've been to the point where uh, I didn't do cans for a long time. Then I did do cans, and now I'm at the point where I am. Uh, witnessing the the effects of it so uh, i am at the point again where i i do not recommend canned alcohol beverages 
in my experience, they clog up your lymphatic system. And potentially some of the other organs, they keep them from singing and ringing clearly. So this, okay. Let's see. Nope. I'm trying to show the beer that I'm drinking right now, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So it's called the Green Zebra, and what does it have? Uh, it's a ghost style ale. It has watermelon and sea salt. And at first, I was very not drawn towards sea salt uh, beverages, but after trying them towards the end of my uh, beers, uh, it does seem to be very, very pleasurable to have that little extra uh, kick of electrolytes. Surprisingly enough. And the watermelon, uh, they that's a very easy thing to fuck up uh, flavoring wise but uh the founders is what this is uh, the brand founders uh, this that's one of the brands that can basically do no wrong as in uh, they make quality fucking shit so yeah cheers yo It's definitely some pretty nice shite. Okay, so uh, it, took, it took me 13 minutes to get to where we're at here. And that is the monad, the moment. Just, just wanting to express the appreciation that I have for uh, the people that I've been able to connect with who are able to think and discern reality for themselves. The engagement of this is an encouragement of bliss, essentially, but to realize the importance of getting clear, being clear, staying clear. No matter what we go through in life, because we're, all, we're always going to go through uh, ebbs and flows and ups and downs. But clarity is always going to be key in recognizing and, and pulling yourself, pushing yourself, drawing yourself to a point where you know you want to be. And recognizing the things that you need to do to get yourself there. So for me, just recently, I I was wanting to uh, have a little bit of a workout, and 
my energy got drained. I, I felt like I wanted to take a nap, which I normally w would go ahead and listen to my body and do so, but because of factors of quote-unquote time, I went ahead and engaged and got through a warm-up, got through a certain levels and modes of engagement and got to a place where my body really connected and uh, if you ever if you ever work out um, maybe you've gotten to the place where it's almost a little uh, it's not scary it's just a little you have to be careful whenever you get into the certain modes where your body can handle a lot. It can handle... It's almost like your body wants more engagement, more and more. And so you have to be level-headed enough to know when to rest, how to rest, when to take breaks, when to engage. So... I entered that mode to where my body just uh, would heal super fucking quick. And so I would go through sets uh, of certain kind of workouts and, and blast through them and take small breaks. And then my body, because of the blood flow and the oxygen, uh, the oxygen-rich blood, uh... It didn't take long for my for my body to recover and be ready to go again. And also, uh, this is one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, as of lately, whenever I've been preparing my meals, and, and whenever I say prepare my meals, I <laughs> I don't do so in the sense of uh, of uh, how bodybuilders or, or power lifters or whatnot prepare their meals and then put them in plastic and then store them uh, for days on end. No, how I prepare my meal is I I do so with intent and love. I send my energy and, and thoughts and. and I don't want to get too new agey in the terminology, but yeah, just I send my love and, and intent into the into the food as I'm preparing it. So I will add a whole multitude of herbs that I've grown, of spices that I've acquired, and I do everything to taste. So I'm constantly stirring and mixing, adding more. Uh, of certain herbs to counter and also balance other herbs to a point where I'm satisfied. And then I add some ferments to it, say like kombucha and uh, maybe potentially, depending upon the substance I'm uh, operating with, I will add a little bit of nutritional yeast. And then I will have it uh, stay in a... It's not completely airtight. There's a little bit of air. Because whenever you're fermenting something, you, you want there to be a little bit of air. And a flow of energy and uh, essence. Unless you're in like a secondary process of fermentation where... You close off the liquid, and uh, that's when the alcohol content go can potentially go up. So, so yes, uh, this preparation is ended with having having this concoction 
uh, in a warm state because that warmth uh, encourages growth of the bacteria. So I, I will also say that I, I utilize uh, saliva and there, there are many forms of fermentation. You can, you can just use your saliva and you can look this up. Uh, there are many cultures and, and peoples that ferment drinks with their saliva. A lot of saliva. But I do so because I want my own digestive enzymes, which is in all of our saliva, to be in the process of the food, in the process of my kombucha that I have. Uh, and then I, I have that uh, on a warm uh, platform for, say, maybe a couple hours or more. And I've done this enough times to know when something is going to become too fermented to where potentially bad bacteria is going to enter in. Or if it's not enough heat, then it's not going to be that fermented. So you, you just got to find the sweet spot, as is the nature of life. Like, we have to find our sweet spot to where, not, not to where we are comfortable within, but to where the most engagement and benefit and especially the most benefit to where the level that we are at currently. We have to recognize and discern and realize where we are at currently. Yes, dream about where you wish to be, but don't get lost in the clouds. Ground that dream down. So, <laughs> this has already gone quite a bit longer than what I had thought, but that's fine. <sighs> so, after preparing all this food, and this has been happening lately, I have uh, quite a bit of it. Um, there, there's just a whole bunch of different things. Herbs, uh, plants, and vegetables... Uh, potatoes, just just a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, mushrooms, sautéed mushrooms, also fermented. Spices, uh, jalapenos, um, peppers, pickles, green beans, sauerkraut, just a whole bunch of different things in here. I see this and my body feels like I could enjoy this, but I would enjoy this more if I have a really good workout beforehand. My body would, would absorb more of it and utilize more of it. I would gain more from it. So this has been like an inspiration for me. Like even if I, and I've been, uh, at times where I don't really, you know, we, we all go through those times where we uh, we feel a little sluggish. And we we don't want to get the workout in, but you got to you got to get that shit in, yo. So uh, it's been really cool. Like I've been in times where I'm like, no, I'm sore. Like I don't want to risk injury. Blah blah blah. And then I prepare all this food, and I'm like. No, dude. Like, I'm going to earn... And that's the thing. Like, that's the feeling that I have. Like, no, I'm going to earn this fucking food. I'm going to earn this meal. <laughs> yeah. So that's been interesting lately. And it's been it's been really fucking cool. And, and my body's been responding like mad. Like, the transformation. Like, uh, oh my gosh. Like, I'm off my fast currently, but my body is, uh, because I'm doing this level of engagement, 
my body is almost like going into a form of ketosis. Uh, more and more quickly, I find. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to whenever I start my fast, which is in a couple of days, at uh, how much my muscles are just going to pop out <laughs> from, from the fat. Which, the fat has a purpose. Um, it's to feed the, the muscles. So uh, it's healthy to have a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of body fat on you it, your body is going to utilize that in healing especially if you're doing extreme stuff your body is going to be able to call upon those things to help utilize certain modes of beingness and modes of engagement modes of healing different different fluidiums Okay, so enough enough of that. Enough of me. <laughs> Let's go. The days when Saturn ruled. What, when Saturn ruled? Uh, when time ruled all things? Hmm. I, don't, I don't know if time ever existed. We're timeless, but we're without time, right? And I want to play this right here because uh, that's something I keep seeing uh, in my awareness, at least uh, coming up, is, is people talking about Saturn once again. And if you haven't noticed, like, certain themes and, and whatnot come up during certain time periods and cycles, which is really... Uh, all there is, it's, it's cycles and patterns. There's no time as such. It's just what you're able to emit and exist within. Have you noticed how time, your perception of this thing called time changes with what you're engaging? With your mode of beingness, whenever you're in an excited state, whenever you're in a more depressed mood. Time flies when you're having fun, right? And then time drags whenever life's a drag. What is the... navigator, accelerator, the orchestrator of time. It's you. And then with the Saturn thing, like... The cube. Saturnalia. <sighs> okay, first and foremost, if you're if you're paying attention to things outside of you and choosing to believe that they are having an influence on your inner state, then you're going to constantly be in in a loop program to where you go in and out of certain states and you blame or you choose to direct the causality on something outside of you and that's you're never really going to be able to reclaim the sovereignty of what who and what you are if you're placing that much power and energy on things outside of you
I will just say this. All the stars and what you have been told are planets are a macrocosm of the microcosm within each and every one of us, as within, so without. Go out at night. Go out in nature to where there's not as much light pollution as in artificial light around you. And open yourself up to the skies. To the airiness. To the nature within and without. And bear witness to what you think are stars. To what you think are fixed lights in the sky. Open up your heart and bear witness to how everything that you think is outside of you responds to your inner state. This is the realm that we live in, people. It doesn't matter on the in initiates, the initiatory levels what shape it is. What matters is what shape your mindset is in. What shape you are in. Where, how in tune and in touch and yes, in control, but also able to release and allow the flow of your energy and motion, your emotions to be in touch with your intuitions to where you're able to discern your reality for yourself. You can release the BS belief systems. And choose for yourself what is real for you. And yes, maybe that's not quote unquote someone else's truth. That's just Whenever someone says, you know, my truth, your truth, blah, 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 it's just a perception. There is only truth. There is only isness. And then there's a whole infinitude of perceptions of that. So, yes, it is all within you. But, but it doesn't stop there because that's not what this creation, this, this orchestra of, of how we came to be, that's not, it's not just about you, even though you are the main focal point, truly. It is also about within and without. There are many things going on without you that you are not privy to, privy to. There are many things going on within you that you are not privy to. So we can become more privy to the things outside of us and gain, you know, knowledge of, of these things. But if we don't bridge the gap and connect it to the inner stuff, then we're just going to be too airy and too... Uh, Ungrounded. Ground and found your foundations. Find your foundations. And then the outside stuff will begin to kind of fall into place. The outside stuff, uh, the pieces of the puzzle will just kind of, uh, you'll just gravitate towards them. <laughs> gravitate. Magnetate towards them. They will just come into place. Whenever you really start to do deeper inner engagements. Oftentimes, your inner engagements can be of an extreme nature, such as if you're having shamanic work, 
or uh, engaging with spirits or plant spirit medicine, a lot of times the language that you have been taught is not going to be adequate enough, or at least your level of understanding, to where you're able to really match the emotion, the energy, the feeling of the felt experience in those states. But having just experienced them, that in and of itself, if you allow, if you don't go off the deep end, which a lot of people do, they, they get too, uh, fire, too fired up, they get too fiery and not, not enough watery. where they 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 allow the mind and their uh, their persona or their uh, ego uh, of what they think they are instead of allowing what they are to present itself to them and that's the beauty of it whenever we yes pursue choose to experience but also allow the teachings to come to you And they will. No, there's no, there, there's no, um, what's, which one is this? Is this the lady finger that gets the Saturn ring on it and all that shit? No. Time is, time is at a standstill right now. That's an interesting thing to say. But isn't it always the case? Time is what you choose to emit. It's your inner state. But collectively, time is indeed at a standstill right now because the whole universe is kind of uh, holding its breath to, to see where we take this, where we go with this right now, where we're at. Because we have a lot of parasitic and corrupted energies trying to control the game how they have been used to controlling the game. But we also have influences at play that have uh, blasted through that shit and have allowed pathways for enough of us to follow and feel into that makes that makes those previous modes of control and manipulation docile. It, it makes them irrelevant. And so the powers that have been are, are kind of uh, freaking the fuck out. It, at least they were. Now we're at a place where we're just seeing the after effects. We're at a place right now where we are going to see a quick transition into uh, truth and beauty uh, collectively. Um, also, right now, like we're also witnessing like uh, an extreme of uh, chaos, as in uh, willful, ignorant chaos, and people who are not able to let go of what they have chosen to believe in. They're not able to re-examine and question why they think the way they do. So we're seeing a, a, uh, a, a large percent of people holding on desperately to this uh, falling away to to the programs and the scripts falling away and people 
desperately clinging to them. But ultimately, what's going to come about is the machinations and programs that have been utilized in manipulating people are being flipped upside down, inside out. It's being flipped in upon itself to where we are utilizing these tools for connectivity of truth. A larger bandwidth of vibrations and resonances of authenticity. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how time rules. I, I don't know that Saturn ever had a, an authority over this realm because we're not on Saturn, are we? Yeah. We're on Earth. Earth. I like to say Earth. Earth is my favorite thing ever. Earth. Earth. We're Earth based. As far as I can tell, I can levitate. Uh, I just. I'm gonna do it on. I'm gonna do it here. You wouldn't believe me, like. No, he didn't levitate. He was not. He didn't. There was. He told us there was gravity, and I never just hover above things. No, doesn't really exist. <laughs> there, there is a quote-unquote time to admit certain things, but right now we're in a time where even, even if we, we choose to demonstrate the angles of this angelic realm uh, we're at a place where it's too easy to dismiss it it's too easy to say oh it's uh, the video is was fixed they they you know they used they used the CGI to make it look real But soon enough, people are going to uh, realize that they're going to have to go in person, in the flesh, to certain locations, to certain people, so they know and they can feel what is real in the moment for them. They can see it directly with their own eyes, not through a lens or a black mirror. But they can see it and experience it in the moment as it's happening. And yes, there's going to be some of us that, that do so in the media and digital platform. But uh, like I just said, there's going to be uh, a lot of naysayers and uh, hypocritical <sighs> bullshit people that... They, they are clinging to their belief systems, to what they've been taught, to, to their scientism. That can't be possible. Otherwise, science would have proven it. Tell that to the person that can phase shift in and out of many different realms and realities and biolocate and dream upon your dream that you call reality. Tell that to the person that can make you think that you're living a certain life, your entire life, until you find out it was all just a play, just someone else's game, someone else's script. Someone else's Maya that they were able to transmit and emit. We are reality creating machines, so to speak. We dream and create our reality.
in every moment? Are you aware of this? To what degree? Nice to see you again. I did a talk with uh, who? Who did I do this with? Awaken Brave? Awakened, awakened at such an early hour for this. Um, I'm going to talk to him again soon. The video is lagging. Uh, is it on my side or your side? It's on all sides. And this is something that's been happening uh, quite frequently with the connectivity trying to disconnect the connections of the hearts. But uh, even though the, the media, the digital media is being fluxed and fucked with, you can't fuck with the actual connectivity of the heart vibrations. Once, once you make that connection, with your heart, with a certain person, with a certain people, then you're always in connection with them. So yes, be brave and awaken to your inter, <laughs> your interplanetary, your your inner sanctuary. Ground down, ground up. Build the bridge between the two and unite in that homeostasis of the heart center. Powerhouse. Experience the infinite, the infinitude of love. Anastasis, be your own resurrection. Peace.